Welcome to this channel. My name is Mtawi Dan Bosco and we are yet back in another episode. Feel free to subscribe, share, comment, advise where necessary. Invite a friend and wait for other interesting episodes. Uh, today we are summarizing chapter 3 of The Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a book written by Robert Kiyosaki. Join the conversation by commenting, sharing, liking and all that. Welcome aboard. Chapter 3. Why teach financial literacy? Robert tells us how his friend took over his father's empire in 1990 and how he is running it better than his dad. He also informs us that Mike and the wife are very wealthy and now grooming one of their sons to take over from Mike. Robert says that he retired at the age of 47 assuming freedom and his wife was 37. Despite the retirement, their wealth kept on growing since their assets were large enough to grow on their own. Where his friend Mike decided to run the empire, Robert chose to retire. Robert's mind always ran to an article given to him titled The Richest Businessman when asked by people how he made money, how they could prepare their children and the secret to success and so on. Robert telling us what the article entailed reveals that in 1923, there was a meeting at the Edgewater Hotel held by the greatest and richest men in Chicago. These were nine with each holding a big office. After 25 years, those dead had died broke, whereas the ones that were alive were totally down financially. He attributes this financial loss to the fact that people tend to focus on too much money other than their greatest wealth education. He hopes that if people are equipped with the knowledge to know how to be flexible, keep an open mind and learn, they will definitely grow richer and richer through changing circumstances. He goes on to state that it is intelligence that solves the problems and later produces money, but not money as many think. He warns that money assumed without financial intelligence will not last longer. Robert recounts how he used to refer to a statement told to him by his rich dad that if he wanted to be rich, he needed to be financially literate when asked by people how they could get started or getting rich. He retaliates how his educated dad emphasized reading books as his rich dad emphasized the need to master financial literacy. He also emphasizes the need to lay a firm foundation for wealth through mastering financial literacy. Robert points out boring subjects such as accounting as key ones to be taught to children after simplifying them. He acknowledges how his rich dad built his and Mikey's foundation at an early age through using pictures and words. He says that the rich first employed simple drawings, jargons and the movement of money and later included numbers. With such a foundation, Mike is now in a position to run a billion dollar empire since he later went on to master the more complex and sophisticated accounting analysis. Robert thinks that he is not as sophisticated as Mike since he runs a smaller empire though he shared the same foundation with Mike. Robert talks of the illustrations his rich dad used to teach them guided by a major rule stated below. The rule states that one must be able to understand the difference between liabilities and assets and purchase assets. Robert stresses that failure to understand the difference between the two has made many people struggle financially. For Robert, the rich acquire assets as the poor and the middle class acquire liabilities which they wrongly take for assets. Rich Dad eventually revealed to Mike and Robert the secret to becoming rich as being knowing what assets are and acquiring them. Rich Dad stressed that the reason why most people are poor is that they do not understand the difference between an asset and a liability. Rich Dad explains an asset as something that puts money in one's pocket and a liability as something that takes money out of someone's pocket. He points out that if anyone is to be rich, they have to spend their life buying assets and that if anyone wanted to be poor or middle class, they would spend their life buying liabilities. He retaliates that it is failure to know the difference between assets and liabilities that causes financial struggle in the real world. Robert notes that the foundation of financial struggles is illiteracy in both words and numbers and that those struggling financially are either unable to read in numbers or words. He puts it that the rich are because they are more knowledgeable in different areas than the struggling ones and that if one wants to be rich, 
maintain their wealth, they need to be acquainted with finance both in words and numbers. Robert notes that educated people face financial difficulties after pursuing their professions successfully and that the missing link here is that they do not know how to spend money after getting it. For example, keeping money from people who take it from you. He also indicates that going by the wave of crowds is another matter that causes money problems. It is hard to branch away from the direction of the crowd and as a result Robert and Mike face challenges at school for only choosing to work for rich dad after school and weekends. The two boys refused to go by the standard dogma of teachers who always claimed that if someone did not get good grades in school, they would not do well in the real world. They always sat in meetings held by rich dad and his brokers, Anthony's accountants, brokers, investors, managers and employees and claimed to have benefited from such meetings than in the school. The rich dad had broken out of school at the age of 13 but was directing, instructing, ordering and asking questions of educated people. He noted that the intelligent people do employ people more intelligent than them. Mike and Robert claim to have benefited much from conversations of intelligent people hired by rich dad. It is after being exposed to intelligent conversations. Robert and Mike always went against the set procedures and rules set by teachers and it is after this that they discovered how schools discouraged creativity. They also came to appreciate Rich Daddy's claim that schools are designed to produce good employees instead of employers. The two boys always questioned their teachers about the applicability of what they studied and why they never taught money and how it works. Their answer was always that money was not important, but rather assuming academic excellence would attract money. Robert and Mike grew more distant from their teachers and classmates as they continued to know more about the power of money. Robert always wondered why his educated dad did not put pressure on him about his grades. They however both engaged in conversations about money. In one unpleasant conversation, Rich Dad opposed his educated father thinking that the house was his biggest asset. Robert argued that a house is never an asset because it takes money out of the owner's pocket. He offers five grounds on which he bases his argument that a house is not an asset. One, he says, people spend a lot of money paying for what they never own. That is to say, most people buy a new house every after a long period of time where they incur a new 30-year loan to pay off a previous one. 2. People incur after tax expenses off their mortgage. This happens despite the fact that they receive a tax deduction for interest on mortgages. He also says that the owners of houses incur property taxes. Then 4. He says that houses do not often raise their value. And finally, five, their money ends up growing in expense column. Robert further states that if one decides to own an expensive house at the start of their investment journey, they lose out on time during which other assets could have grown, lose out on additional capital which would have been invested other than meeting the high maintenance costs or expenses of a home, and finally loss of investment experience. Robert makes it clear that he intends to make people draw a difference between an asset and a liability and that if they intend to own these houses, they must first put in place assets that will generate cash flow to meet the house expenses. Comparing his two dads' financial standing, Robert states that his educated dad had his liabilities reflected in mortgages and credit card debts rather than assets where the rich dad had his asset column generating more than enough income to cover expenses and the balance gets reinvested thus the asset column continues to grow as the income it produces continues to grow with it. Looking at the middle class, Robert asserts that these tend to struggle financially due to having their expenses increase in equal amounts with their wages, which he termed as a rat race, and that their assets do not increase but rather their liabilities do. He attributed the presence of a debt ridden society to the thinking that a home is an investment and the philosophy that pay rises imply buying a larger home and spending more. He also points out that increased spending drags families into greater debt and in more financial uncertainty despite advancing their jobs and getting pay rises quite often.
For Robert, assuming such a path is a result of having a weak financial education. Robert advises that the need to understand the difference between assets and liabilities and devoting one's energy on purchasing income generating assets actually serves as a foundation for becoming rich. As one continues doing such and keeping their expenses and liabilities down, their asset column ends up growing. He explains that this will also avail more money in the asset comb, thus strengthening the asset base, which creates room for looking at other speculative investments to invest in. He stresses that for employees owning homes, their efforts are wasted on working for other people where they help to provide their success and retirement and that such people also work for the government which deducts taxes from their paycheck and finally they work for banks through paying back mortgage and paycheck debts. Then he offers advice to job holders of building wealth by minding about their businesses such that when their businesses get to a level of covering all the expenses through cash flow, they can now quit their jobs and concentrate their efforts on their businesses. At this point, they ought to be looking at building excess cash flow from their assets reinvested into the asset comb. As their asset comb continues to grow, Assets also grow and cash flow if they keep their expenses less than the cash flow from assets. At this point, one will grow richer and richer gaining cash from different sources other than offering physical labor. Key lessons from chapter 3. The rich buy assets, the poor only have expenses and the middle class buys liabilities thinking they are assets. 2. A home is a liability but not an asset. 3. Increasing the asset comb, keeping liabilities and expenses way below cash flow is a foundation for building wealth. Job holders' efforts benefit the government through deducting taxes, enriching employers and banks but not the employee. Understanding the difference between assets and liabilities and focusing on buying income generating assets is the right path to building wealth. Lack of financial education is the cause of financial struggles the middle class faces. Once again, my name is Mtawe Dan Bosco and I encourage you to subscribe, like, share and comment. You could also advise where necessary. Invite a friend to join in and then wait for other interesting conversations and other episodes. Remember, we are committed to summarizing financial literacy books for you, picking out the key lessons for you such that you can get enlightened in regards to the financial world.